third quarter report for 2019. And uh, Mr. De Walsh is going to present. Do we need to lift this up? Okay, good. Would you like it open so you can see better? No, I can see that okay. up there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr. Supervisor, members of the board. Um, <clears throat> Typically, um, our report that we provided, well, sometimes it's in a, in a form like this, and sometimes it's just provided in a written form to you. We thought it was important because of all the issues and, and um, projects that we have going on and our financial situation that we would um, provide this to you this evening. I hope that before we go through this, you'll walk into this meeting tonight because in some towns, if you, communities, if you pave a couple roads and you improve a park, you've had a really good year. I hope you'll walk in tonight, sit in your seats, and think, pretend that you don't know anything that's occurred throughout this year or what's going on in the township, and, and, and take in the, um, the, just the vast amount of things that are going on in the township and the projects. I'm amazed, I think you will be too. We'll start with the Parks Department. Of course, we broke ground for the Farmer's Market Project in May open the small dog park over by um, the service center, which we have 123 members already at just after the opening. Our garden club has won two awards in the past year for the um, Paint at Pink Park and then also uh, most recently the improvements to the police and fire grounds. Held a celebration radiant event um, in the end of June. Public works, uh, the Okemos Road Boardwalk, that's been talked about for a long time. How was that funded? It was funded because our staff, namely uh, Mr. Perry, uh, with the help of his staff, I think Ms. Maisner may have been involved in that, went to Ingham County and was able to get back some of the um, tax, taxes that we'd been sending since I think the 2014 or 15 Ingham County um, millage. And this $900,000 project is funded by those taxes coming back to Meridian Township. Our HVAC replacement that needs to be done at this building, that's over a $2 million project. And again, through proper planning, now in most communities, this would be a 10-year installment purchase contract. You'd be spending $200,000, $220,000 a year plus interest cost, probably about two fifty dollars a year over 10 years. That's how you pay for it. Not us. We're paying for it in cash in 2020. Local road funding. Um, again, something that's been solved, solved by our voters, and again, a step that the township is taking to take on um, the responsibility of fixing our roads 147 miles over the next 10 years, but we're doing it without um, long-term debt. We're not taking on debt that we don't have the millage to support it for. So when you take a look at our debt portfolio, you see the central fire station, there's a .2 millage to back that up. When you take a look at our roads, that we have $35 million over 10 years, we have a millage to back that up. And then also our pension liability, we have a 1.483 mil to back that up. All of our debt is not reoccurring debt for our general fund. That is amazing. Go find another community that has that situation. Town or road, some would argue it didn't need to be improved. I think it did, and that's the road, of course, leading into the new park that's been developed, that's been paid for and uh, also paid for, and I think that was over a $2 million park up at Tana Road under the direction of uh, uh, Ms. Maisner, and that, of course, has been paid for in cash. The solar project, the landscaping bids are in. You can expect the uh, new, new solar project to be landscaped this fall, and in addition to that, of course, we know that there's another 100000 set aside and then a $10,000 set aside for the Environmental Commission that was put in the, in the budget. Human Resources, we have seven ongoing contracts. All contracts are up right now. Negotiations, um, with we've started with four of the seven bargaining units are going well. I would expect them to be in front of the board in the next 60 days. Um, with the police department, um, Chief and I are making a national presentation um, in Nashville next, well, no, now this month, um, regarding how um, Meridian Township handled um, the whole uh, situation with um, Brianne, Russ, Brianne Randall um, Gay. And of course, this year we handled, we were asked to have an investigation into our police department with what happened in 2004. And of course, that came back where Meridian Township was fully transparent with what happened. And others looked at Meridian Township collectively, all of us in this room, about how we handled um, that very delicate uh, situation. Our police department's going for accreditation. 
and you can expect um, that to, to finalize in December. We just had um, an evaluation team here last week, projects going forward, a new canine unit for our police department, and we've improved, we've enhanced um, our insecurity within our building here. We have two new um, greeters who are also um, work as a security team for our entire building. Our fire department, lots of things going on there. One of the things that we're working on is fire staffing. When you take a look at the number of calls that we have, you can see that East Lansing is just adding a, a few more firefighter paramedics. And we're always watching, uh, reviewing, vetting our number of calls versus the personnel that we have. And we have to continue to do that going forward. The ninth, ninth warning siren was installed um, this year, and the tenth one, and it wasn't too long ago, remember, we were putting in the fifth one. For those of you that are on the board a while, the fifth one, I think, was over at Watch Park. And now we're putting in the tenth warning siren next year with the, uh, the budget. Installed our, our, through the work of our department, uh, mostly um, our inspector Tavis Milroy, we've put in 2,500, think of that, 2,500. That doesn't mean 25 homes because obviously some homes have four or five of the detectors in it, but we've um, it, we installed over 2,500 smoke and CO alarms uh, within Meridian Township through a grant. Economic development, I'll need to tell you about what's going on with the Village of Okemos. It's a $100 million project got to keep the legs on this project and keep it moving forward it's going to have it's a public private development we just recently uh, with director buck did a study up in hazlitt for housing needs it came out um, in a positive way for uh, the township and for the northern half of the township and the need for residential development uh, we've been working really diligently on the meridian mall meeting down at the headquarters and uh, working very diligently on how we can improve and we've had some great additions with launch and high caliber brownfield we are embarking on our first brownfield of the township that's solely been being completed we created the brownfield authority led by chair scott craig and um, really really with ned jackson and the entire group that we have on that board it's really um, a group that clearly understands um, the process the planning department Ready Ride funding approved in August. Hazlitt Shop Town, this lawsuit's been resolved. The Bennett Zone Road rezoning has been um, taken up a, a majority of our time, uh, Mr. Menser and, and, and Director uh, Kieselbach and I, and others, Director Perry and Chief Plaga have been involved as well in this residential development off of um, off of Bennett Road. That is going to the Planning Commission on October 14th. You can expect, if things go forward, you can expect to see that uh, in November at your two meetings for the rezoning. CATA, great things have happened. More hours, more buses, more locations, all in the last year. Now that alone, in a lot of communities, is a significant enhancement because it's not just benefiting a select few, it's benefiting all people of Meridian Township. Affordable housing, a goal that the board put on their um, agenda for, 20, for uh, 2019 and with the Wilder Cooper development, um, again, hitting the mark on what the goals are for the township. Medical marijuana, uh, Mr. Menser. One thing I would point out with this that, it, that didn't get mentioned and that we're dealing with right now as of today is that it's very clear that the site you list, very specific, the site you list is the site you must operate in. You can't gerrymander that. If you can gerrymander that, why do we have the process? And so we've already had two requests today for the winners to add on to where they're at or completely move locations. And that's not what the board set it up to be. And we're gonna hold firm to what the board's action was that it was one applicant, one property, and that's why the board set it up that way. Communications department, the Prime um, Radian Magazine, and the core services that we will continue to provide beyond January 1st, even with the changes that are out there. And most recently to um, Director Guthrie and her staff uh, won an award here recently for election night coverage. IT department, you just met uh, Troy, he's, he's a great addition to our team. We've taken uh, what we were allocating to that department and we've switched things around. We now have two people instead of three we're spending less than what we were before, and I think we have more talent on board. The finance department, this is a big one. You know, if you don't 
focus on police and fire and parks and the roads we're doing and everything we do, let's focus on our financing. And right before us, um, right now, we're looking to go from a double A uh, plus bond rating to AAA, which is really important because it's going to um, have everything to do with how we sell the bonds on October 10th for the roads. And I've been told that this, if we're able to get this increase, it's not likely, but we sure are trying. And if we get this bond rating increase, we could save up to a half a percent or more on the sale of our bonds on October 10th. And that's compounded 35 million over 10 years. How many people have it? How many communities have a AAA? Well, I think you might be surprised to know that only 6% in the state of Michigan have a AAA rating. Six out of 100 communities. So very few communities are prestigious enough to have a AAA rating. Kent County, Ottawa County, some of the bigger jurisdictions have a AAA rating. We are on the cusp of being able to um, achieve this very, um, be a very generous rating for um, our project or our funding that's coming up for the roads. Uh, we'll know uh, within the next 10 days of whether we have that or not. Healthcare, uh, we continue to provide 100% healthcare uh, paid premiums to our employees. Our employees, because we're under the hard cap, the, the hard cap that the legislature came up with some 10 or 12 years ago, um, we continue to be under that, and so our employees um, pay no uh, premiums towards their health care. Pension liability, again, go back to the actual report, page three. June 30, 2019, we're required to put in $2.75 million. But in, on page three, it tells you if you want to get to 100% funding by 2028, what do you need to put in? 3.935. What are we putting in? 4.75. We are paying <clears throat> substantially beyond the number that's required to reach 100% funding. We're putting in over 4 million. 2.75 and then a million and a half for the pension, right? 750 for police, 750 for fire. That's what we promised the residents. We're on track to be 100% funding in our pension. Retiree health care. What are we required to put in? 245,000 a year. What are we required to reach 100% funding? 415 a year. What are we putting in this year? We're putting 450, or next year, $450,000. We're putting in nearly double of what's, uh, uh, what we would need to pay under our annual contribution that's required. We're putting in, so we're on track again in our retiree health care to be 100% funding in 2028. And the 2020 budget, it's important that we focus on this because this is our estimated expenses and revenue and our total, uh, what's <coughs> anticipated, uh, uh, do we have a deficit in our budget since it shows a $1.8 million uh, withdrawal from our rainy day fund? And the answer is clearly no, we don't. And I'll tell you why. This is really the most important two or three slides in this whole presentation. Because if you can't manage your finances, none of us should be here collectively. You should get new people. We have $4 million in one-time cost in the 2020 budget. I won't go through them all because we just went through this all in the budget, but namely, uh, the HVAC improvements are half of that at 2.2 million. But if we decided that we weren't gonna give the historical village um, some dollars, and we weren't gonna pay for our HVAC all in one year, we weren't gonna improve our employee break rooms, we weren't gonna fund the farmer's market, these are all one-time non-reoccurring capital cost. Those That $4 million could easily, with a swipe of a pen, be taken out and nothing would really change for us. So let's look at the next slide. If you take that $4 million of one-time cost out and subtract your budgeted deficit of $1.8 million, we're actually operating at a $2.2 million cash flow. $2.2 million to the positive in 2020 if we did do our... Can you go back one? Yeah. <clears throat> and this is, this is really... Um, what is our fund balance projected to be on December 31 of 2020 if if we do all the capital projects. It's still slightly under, just under $8 million. And what would it be if we didn't do the capital projects? It'd be $10 million. What percentage of that is your general fund? It's not on $24 million. It's on $20 million. Because if you have a $24 million 
general fund budget, which we do in 2020, you have to take out the one-time non-reoccurring capital cost of four million. So you're really operating expenses for 2020, 20 million. If we didn't do the capital cost, we'd have a $10 million fund balance, we'd be at 50% of our general fund as a rainy day fund. Fund balance approved by the policy, the board in 2013, 5.25 million. If we do our capital projects, it's 7.9 million. Without it, it'd be 10.1. We'd be nearly double of what the board anticipates that we have. So the message is tonight, a lot of projects, great success. We still have some hurdles in front of us. The farmer's market project is slightly delayed right now, although we just received some good news on it today. But we have plenty of things in front of us, lots of roads to do, but we are operating on all cylinders and our financial um, outlook currently and for the future is extremely strong. And we need to embrace that because there's very few communities in Michigan that are anywhere close to having the strength of our general fund that we have. In fact, I just heard from the treasurer today that our interest earnings are way up from what we expected. That's not even in this uh, performa that I just showed you. We're very, very strong and we're getting stronger and we really should be upgraded to a AAA bond rating. So at this point, I'd answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Manager Walsh, and thank you to all the members of the Meridian team because obviously fantastic work is going on here in this township. We really appreciate it. Questions or comments, board members? You've awed everybody. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>